everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Hey, it's time to go back to Nickelodeon again, and today, we're going to talk about the wild thornberries. From Arlene Klasky, the creator of the Rugrats, and lasting for five seasons from 1998 to 2004, the series focuses around a family of documentary filmmakers, famous for their televised wildlife studies. It primarily centers on the family's youngest daughter, Eliza, and her secret gift of being able to talk to animals, which was bestowed upon her after rescuing a shaman masquerading as a trapped warthog. Together with her chimpanzee friend, Darwin, Eliza frequently ventures through the wilderness, befriending many wild animals along the way, and realizing moral truths and lessons through either their experiences or a particular animal species' wild style, or simply assisting the creatures by which they become acquainted in their difficulties. During my childhood, this was another one of my favorite cartoon shows from Nickelodeon, and I thought that this show was really amazing. Sadly, the crossover movie with the Rugrats wasn't really that great. But for this episode, we're going to look at the Thornberry family's solo movie and see how it holds up today. Released on December 20th, 2002, this is the Wild Thornberries movie. So... Let's get started. When Eliza tries to save a cheetah cub named Tally from a pair of poachers in a helicopter, her paternal grandmother, Cordelia, who visits the family, decides it's high time that Eliza gets a civilized education at an English boarding school. Later, during her stay in London, Shaman Manyambo tells Eliza in a dream that Tally is alive and she can still save him which gives Eliza the courage to go back to Africa. While Eliza is heading back, her family is preparing to record a miraculous event where thousands of elephants emerge from the safety of the forest to watch the solar eclipse. Unfortunately, a group of poachers want to hunt down the elephants for their tusks. When Eliza discovers what the poachers are up to, she, along with Darwin, Donnie, and her sister, Debbie, must devise a plan to stop them. So, does this movie still hold up after 18 years? Well, I say yes. And also, I think it's a major improvement over another animated Nickelodeon movie that was released the exact same year. Since Hey Arnold's theatrical movie was not the film that fans asked for. But... Let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, since there's not a lot of trivia to talk about, let's talk about the animation. And, to be perfectly honest, I think the animation is absolutely excellent. And, due to the cinematic budget, it looks very high definition. I really love how the African environments look, from the savannas to the jungles. But, overall, Tempo Valley would have to be my favorite, due to not only the final climax, but also due to the solar eclipse. Also, I kind of like that this film features London, since it's been about 10 years since my last visit there. Unfortunately, we don't see too much of it in this movie. Also, I think the film has an underrated soundtrack. However, my favorites would have to be Animal Nation by Peter Gabriel and Father and Daughter by Paul Simon, which was nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Song, but it sadly lost to Lose Yourself by Eminem for 8 Mile. As for the story, well... I think this film takes place between the show's 4th and 5th seasons, and while it is good, sometimes 
the movie can feel a bit rushed, like at the English boarding school, or the act after Eliza loses her powers until after she saves the elephants. Plus, there are some parts that are fun, heartwarming, intense, and thought-provoking, and a few other scenes that can be a tad immature, silly, and gross at times, like a food fight, a poop joke, and a baboon's butt. But, on the other hand, most of the movie brings back memories from a few past episodes, like Gift of Gab and a few others. And now that we're done with Mustang Notes, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought them to life. Our main character, Eliza Thornberry, is voiced by Lacey Chabert, who you might remember as Jill from Babes in Toyland from 1997, Vatani from The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, Alu from Balto 2, Wolf Quest, Tanya from two of the American Tales sequels, and she also got to be in a few Hallmark movies, like this one. You know, I really like Eliza. Not only is she brave and adventurous, but I think her ability to talk to animals makes her really special. Plus, like in the show, sometimes Eliza can get herself into trouble at times. In the movie, I like when Eliza interacts with a gorilla who gives her directions to Tembo Valley and an elephant named Phaedra who teaches her how to make well, other elephants turn around. Plus, I like that Eliza was able to make a few friends when she was at the English boarding school in London. Eliza's best friend, Darwin, is voiced by Tom Kane, whom I've talked about in my blogs of Kim Possible, A Sitch in Time, The Powerpuff Girls Movie, and Star Wars The Clone Wars. While Darwin is Eliza's most loyal companion, there are times when Darwin can be a bit paranoid, but at the same time, he tries to be the voice of reason for Eliza. Next we come to Eliza's parents, Nigel and Marianne, voiced by Tim Curry and Jody Carlisle. In the show, Nigel hosts his nature documentary series while Marianne serves as his camera lady. Plus, I think their RV, known as the Convy, is a really cool vehicle. Also, I think Nigel and Eliza do share some sweet, heartwarming moments. For example, I like the scene where Nigel gives Eliza his Medal of Bravery before she gets sent to boarding school. Next we have Eliza's older sister, Debbie, voiced by Danielle Harris, who got to be in four of the Halloween films. To describe her, well, Debbie is pretty much a typical teenager who is interested in music and fashion, and she longs for a normal suburban life. Plus, there are times when she ridicules Eliza. Also, in the movie, Debbie learns about Eliza's secret after she reveals it to the poachers, which makes her amazed that Eliza would give up her gift to save her life. And Debbie promises to keep her secret, otherwise she'll be turned into a baboon. Also, I like the part where Debbie reminds Eliza that she has been helping animals long before getting her powers, which restores Eliza's confidence. Next we come to the hyperactive Donnie, voiced by Red Hot Chili Pepper singer Flea. Donnie is a feral boy who was raised by orangutans after his biological parents were killed by poachers long before the Thornberry family adopted him. You know, I find Donnie to be pretty funny at times, 
due to him having a lot of energy, and he can be hard to control. Also, Donnie will pretty much eat practically anything, including bugs and plants, and he enjoys speaking in a unique form of gibberish, and he loves doing the wedgie dance. Nigel's mom, Cordelia, is voiced by the late Lynn Redgrave, who got to be in the 2003 Universal version of Peter Pan and the underrated Lion of Oz. Now, I kind of have mixed feelings for Cordelia due to the fact that she has a difficult time showing how she is proud of her son and she wishes that he and his family could do something besides travel all over the world and document wildlife. Also, in the film, Cordelia takes an antagonistic role here, in which she forcefully sends Eliza to a girls' boarding school in London, due to her belief that Eliza, playing with animals, is unorthodox and uncivilized. Next, we come to the villains, Sloan Blackburn and his wife, Bree, voiced by Rupert Everett and Marissa Tomai. I find these guys to be very threatening characters. Not only do they kidnap Tally and shoot a rhino, but their main goal is to hunt the elephants at Tempo Valley during the solar eclipse by setting off explosives to make the elephants charge into an electric fence. Plus, I think these two are clever to disguise themselves as wildlife veterinarians in order to not gain suspicions from the authorities. Next we come to a cheetah cub named Tally, voiced by Kimberly Brooks, whom I've talked about in my blog of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. I find Tally to be a very important character due to him being kidnapped by poachers while he and Eliza were playing. However, after Eliza finds Tally in Bree and Sloane's RV, he tells her that the poachers will be using explosives to make the elephant stampede at Tembo Valley. Our next character is Boko an African native voiced by Oba Babatundi. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, this guy becomes a supporting character for Debbie while looking for Eliza, Darwin, and Donnie using the Congo Con. Finally, we come to Shaman Minyambo, voiced by veteran voice actor Kevin Michael Richardson. This is the guy who gave Eliza the ability to talk to animals in return for saving him, but only on the condition that her gift must be kept secret. To me, while he doesn't really have a big role here, he does make a few appearances throughout the movie. However, I thought the scene where Sean Minyambo motivates Eliza to go back to Africa via dream sequence was very thought-provoking, and I like the scene where he grants Eliza's powers back as a reward for saving the elephants. Also to note, I think Manyambo's design for this movie is really amazing compared to his TV version. And I could be wrong, but I think he was altered to avoid controversy. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But still, I think he's still a cool character anyway. Other voice actors in the film include Brock Peters as Ranger Jomo, Alfred Woodard as Tally's mother Akila, Chris Summer as the elephant Phaedra, Melissa Greenspan as Eliza's roommate Sarah, Roger Jackson as a horse named Thunder and a squirrel named Reggie, Billy Brown as an injured rhino, Earl Bowen as a gorilla, and even Tara Strong 
Hendon Welch, and Mae Whitman as the schoolgirls who Eliza makes friends with in London. Now that's just awesome. And now for my final words. Overall, the Wild Thornberries movie is a really excellent film from Nickelodeon. Sure, the film can be a bit rushed, and there are some gross and immature stuff at times, but the animation is still great. There are a few parts that are fun, thought-provoking, and nostalgic, and the soundtrack is criminally underrated. The voice acting is spot on, and the characters are equally as great as they are in the show. And I think Eliza is a really special kid with or without her ability to talk to animals. Also, I think Darwin and Donnie are fun characters, and I think Debbie, while still a typical teenager, has a very unique role now, now that she knows about her sister's secret. Still, I recommend this movie for folks who are fans of the Wild Thornberry show or for Nickelodeon fans. Also, if you like, you should also get the full series DVD, for both are equally as enjoyable. I give this movie an 82% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog as we look into a Netflix movie with an animal circus. Mustang Power.